So in the previous class, we have gone through the registers. So the next we will be looking at is the counters. So counters are one of the sequential circuits that will be using the flip-flop. So whenever we are going to implement any circuit that is using the flip-flops, that is basically the sequential circuits. So in sequential circuits, we have gone through like registers. The next we will be looking at at the counters. So what are the counters? We will see. So as the name suggests, counters. So what it's meaning is it will be doing the counting. It will be doing the counting. So it will be used as a timer also. What is a counting device? Counting device. It will be having like counting uh, machine. Also, it used it is used for frequency divider. Frequency divider. So we will see like how it basically works as uh, frequency divider. Once we will be uh, going with the circuit diagram, uh, then we will be letting you know like how the frequency division basically takes place. Also, these counters are used for generating the waveform. So different waveforms can be generated by using these counters. So different uses of the counters are there. So these are, first of all, these are the sequential circuits. It uses flip-flops. for circuit implementation. So in the syllabus, basically, there are two different types is given. So we will just see one by one. So one is like the ripple counter and one is the ring counter is given. So basically the counters, so as we have divided like the sequential circuits are divided into like the synchronous and asynchronous type of circuits. So here also the counters are divided into two different types. So types of counters. So counters are basically divided into two different types. So one is called again the Synchronous counters. Another one is asynchronous. So types of counters in that one is the synchronous counter and another one is the asynchronous counter. So as we know, like the types is basically based on the timing or the, based on the clock pulse, whether we are applying the same clock to the all flip-flops or not. So it is similar to the one that we have already seen, like the sequences circuits that is divided into synchronous and asynchronous synchronous circuit. So here also the counters are divided into synchronous and asynchronous counters. <clears throat> so in asynchronous, uh, in synchronous counters, basically if we talk about, so in synchronous, basically in synchronous, we will be having like all the flip-flops, all the flip-flops, will be connected with same clock in synchronous all the flip flops will be used uh, to connect with the same clock but in case of asynchronous only one flip flop is connected with clock and others others are connected with output of other flip flops so we will explain that once we will be designing the asynchronous type of counters so just for basic understanding we can just think of it
okay so in terms of speed point of view if uh, synchronous type of counters are there they are considered to be the faster one these counter synchronous type of counters are considered to be faster because all the flip flops are connected to the same plug and all the flip flops are activated at the same time it will be working at the same time so it takes lesser time to give the output so that's why the synchronous type of counters are considered to be faster but in case of asynchronous type of counters they are considered to be the slower one it takes more time because one flip flop is on at particular time others are off so finally to get the result there may be the requirement of more than one clock cycle to get the output so that's why these are considered to be the slower one and here then <clears throat> in case of asynchronous counters in case of synchronous counters basically any any random sequence they can count in synchronous any random count or any random sequence they can count these are the synchronous counters but in asynchronous counters they are having fixed counts only they will be going through fixed counts only they will be counting the fixed uh, states or fixed patterns only so these patterns can be either the form of up or down up or down in the sense it may be counting upside up counter up counter in the sense it is counting from 0 1 2 3 4 5 likewise it is up counter down counter is from 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 it is down counter so in case of asynchronous counters the counters will be counting a fixed sequence that will be either up or down some examples we will be looking it out so what are the examples the same example that we will be explaining uh, in the coming slides okay so here the examples of examples of synchronous counters are called like ring counter ring counter is an example of the synchronous counter another one is johnson counter so johnson counter and ring counter are the example of synchronous type of counters in asynchronous counters the asynchronous counters are basically called the ripple counter so all the ripple counters are considered to be the asynchronous type of counters so we will see what is ripple counter and what is the ring and johnson so basically in our syllabus we are having the ripple counter and the ring counter so there is a slight modification into ring counter to get the johnson counter so we will be looking at this johnson counter also okay so before proceeding with the counters uh, and its basics we will just go through few terms that are related to the counters so first of all the counters are there so counters are going to use the flip flops it will be using uses flip flops so counters will be using the flip flops in the sense suppose if one flip flop is used then it will be having two states two states in the sense if one flip flop is there it will be storing either zero or one similarly there may be some counters that can be using two flip flops if two flip flops are using in the sense it will be having four states that four states will be like 0 0 0 1 1 0 so based on the number of flip flops that are being used to implement a particular circuit there will be different states these states are the one like with respect to the input the output will be either 0 or 1 similarly in case of two flip flops are being used by the counters then there will be four different states so these four different states will be like at a particular time the flip flops output will be either 0 0 or 0 1 or 1 0 or 1 so these are the four different states at that the flip flops will be there so once we are going to implement the flip flops we need the number of flip flops like how many number of flip flops are required to implement a particular counter 
so for that we should be knowing like <clears throat> what is the states how many states are there into that counter so if suppose this state is basically represented by capital m capital n is indicate the number of state and if a small n indicate the number of flip flops required then the relation between capital n and a small n is like the number of states will be either less than or equals to 2 to the power n this is the relation between the number of states and the number of flip flops so if uh, counter designing is there if a counter we need to design it states that it is having 10 states if a counter is there that is having 10 states so this is like one state another state like this is one state second state third and four four stated states are there into two flip flop counter designs so similarly if for an example if we need to design a counter having 10 states then for instead of 10 we can call it like 16 suppose so we are having we need to design a counter that is having 16 states then how many flip flops will be required there may be the question like this so based on the above formula you can just think of it if 16 states are required in the sense capital n will be 16 so if capital n is equal to 16 we need to find out the small n so we will be putting it values 16 is less than or equal to 2 to the power n its meaning is n will be equals to 4 n will be 4 okay so 4 or greater than 4 but we will be taking uh, the minimum possible value so n is equals to 4 here. so if we take it here so n is equals to 4 in this case similarly if we are having an example here the n is equals to 10 if the n is equals to 10 then what will be the small n that is number of flip flops so it will be 10 is less than or equals to 2 to the power n so in that case if we put the n value as 3 so if we put n is equals to 3 2 to the power 3 is equals to 8 but 8 is not greater than 10 so n will not be 3 n will not be 3 so n is equals to 4 we have put it is 2 to the power 4 that is 16 so 16 is now greater than 10 its meaning the n will be the number of flip flops will be required is 4 here so whenever we are going to have a counter or designing a counter we should be finding it out like how many number of flip flops are required so for that we can find out by using this formula if we want to find out the n the small n the formula will be like in case of finding out the small n it will be like if we take the log on uh, both side log to the base 2 so it is n is equals to small n will become like n is either greater than or equals to log n to the base 2 this will be the formula for number of flip flops and this is the formula for from the same we can derive this formula okay so while designing a counter first of all we need to find out like how many states are there so how many states are there based on the number of states we need to find out what is the what is the number of flip flops that are required basically so that we can find out by the eva formula now i think uh, you have got it so few more points we will be looking it out so four more points a few more points is like So suppose any counter is there that is having uh, five states. So for any counter, it has five states. Then we can call 
we can say like it is a mod 5 compound so if any flip flop uh, if any counter is there that is having five states then we will be saying like it is a mod 5 counter similarly if any state uh, if any counter is there that is having 10 states then we will be calling like mod 10 counter so that sometimes the question may be coming like design a mod 5 counter design a mod 5 synchronous counter then we have to implement a counter that will be having five states so like that so that i hope i just clear one more point we will be looking at like if a mod 5 counter is there so suppose this is a mod 5 counter okay there is a clock or the input or the clock is there so suppose we are applying a clock so whatever is the clock we are applying here or the input we are providing suppose the clock is having a frequency of suppose here to here uh, we basically say like if it is this is the time period t of the clock then frequency of the clock is 1 upon t so this is the frequency suppose so, so this is the frequency of this clock so at the output we will be getting some output so we will be getting some output so this is the input basically and we are getting some output so output will be a clock pulse only or output will be in the terms of the clock like either high or low so whatever will be the output so the frequency of the output will be whatever is the frequency of the input that is the f input divided by the 5 so mod 5 is there that means 5 states are there so whatever the states are there so here 5 is there or we can call it like here suppose n is there for generalized we can say like if it is mod n counter then the output frequency output uh, clock will be there uh, output pulse will be there that output pulse will be having a frequency that will be input frequency divided by the n value so that's why it is also called the frequency divider so in the description we have just seen like the yeah it counters work as frequency divider so whatever is the input frequency we are providing to the input of the counter at the output we will be getting a frequency that will be divided input frequency divided by the number of states of that uh, counter so that type of uh, questions we we will be verifying it once we will be going through uh, the waveform or the cases where timing diagrams we will be looking it out then we will see that okay so i hope up to here it is clear to everyone So we will be starting with. So we will be starting with synchronous counters. So basically, in synchronous counter, we will be looking at what is the ring counter. and Johnson counter. So first we will be looking like what is a ring counter. So whenever we are going for the synchronous type of counters, we basically say like the counters will be having their clocks or the flip-flops, each of the flip-flops of the counters will be connected with the same clock. Same clock in the sense, we will just draw it out. So suppose we are having a ring counter, that is like we are having uh, a four bit. Suppose we are having a four bit ring counter, 
if a four bit ring counter is there then for that basically yeah it will be using it will be using the four flip flops so in case of uh, ring counter there is a separate structure so for that it's like if a four bit uh, ring counter is there its structure so whenever we are going for the implementation of counters we generally use either t flip flop jk flip flop or d flip flop okay because sr flip flop is having some invalid states so we will not be using that so we will be either using d flip flop or t flip flop or jk flip flop and mostly to implement the flip flops uh, to implement the counters we generally uh, implement the flip flops such that it should be working in the toggling mode so in case of asynchronous type of counters mostly the flip flops are working in toggling mode in ring counter it may be working in toggling or in some other modes also so if these are the flip flops suppose we are implementing by using the d flip flop so this is the d3 and this is q3 this is q3 bar similarly d2 q2 q2 bar d1 q1 q1 bar d0 q0 q0 bar and there will be clock that is this clock is basically the edge triggered clock its meaning it is having a positive edge triggering and all the flip flops will be connected with same clock because it is synchronous type of counter so this is the clock okay and here whatever is the output of uh, flip flop 3 third flip flop its out its, its name can be like flip flop 3 flip flop 2 flip flop one flip flop zero okay so the output of third flip flop will be connected as input to the second one similarly the output of the second one will be connected with the input of the first the output of the first one will be connected to the flip flop input of the zero flip flop so this is the case and then the output of the zero flip flop will be connected as the feedback to the input of the third so this is how the configuration of ring counters are there it look like this this is the connection of uh, the flip flop okay and it forms basically the ring counter so why it is called the ring counter is we will just see why it is called ring counter so this ring counter you can just think of it like it is nothing but like a shift register the ring counter is it is like a shift register you can just write it down like the ring counter is like a shift register shift register having feedback it's like a shift register but there is a feedback so there is a feedback that is going this way there is a feedback but it is part of the synchronous counter it is part of the synchronous counter and here the how the timing diagram is there so we will just see the timing diagram so what is uh, the timing diagram okay timing diagram will explain its working so timing diagram will be working uh, showing its working so we will just see this is the clock and then the different outputs are there so q3 q2 q1 q0 how the outputs are being varying with respect to the clock so if the first clock will be there in the sense if the clock is 
first clock means it is clock clock zero. So first clock is coming out. So when the first clock is there, initially it is considered like all are zero zero zero. When the first clock will be there, initially it will be zero 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 zero. But after that, the next clock will be there. So clock one. It is the counting of the clock basically. So at this clock, it is activated, but all the states of the flip flops are initially zero. This is considered like initial state. Yeah. So next is basically in ring counter, what it is done is it is considered like the last output. Last output of the flip flop is one. It is considered as it is at one in the sense if whatever is the output of the each of the flip flops are initially zero, but at the last one it will be having one. It is initially it is considered. So considered in the sense we can say like when we are assuming it, the last output is considered to be one. So if last output is considered initial condition will be one. So it is basically to activate. So by default in Johnson counter, the last flip flop is considered to be having the output one. So we can just write it down. Is right here. The last flip flop is considered to have logic one. Output and the same logic one output is rotating into the other flip flops that is basically called the ring. That's why it is called the ring counter. So we will be proceeding here. So if this is the case, initially it is considered like the Q naught is having one as a output. Logic one is there by default. Then when the next clock will be coming, when the next clock will be coming, this one will be going as an input to flip flop three. So here, once the input is going to be one, so output will be one because it is a D flip flop. So once it is a D flip flop, here output will be one, and this is the input to the flip flop two. So Q three is input to the flip flop two. So initial input is zero, so zero is there, so zero will be there here. Similarly, zero is there, so it will be zero. Here it will be zero. Again, this is the feedback. So in the next clock. This feedback will be coming here, so it will be zero. This one will be coming here. This one will be coming. Uh, sorry, it, this zero uh, will be coming here. This zero will be coming here. This zero now go to the flip flop three, so it will be zero. This zero will be here. This one will be here, and this zero will be here. Again, this zero will be here. And this zero will be here. This is going to be here. And this one will be shifting to here. Again, this one will be. Shifting to one, then zero, zero, zero. Then this zero will be shifting to the three flip flop. Then this one is here, zero, zero. This zero will be coming here. Likewise, it will be keep on rotating. So we will just see like how it basically works. So it in first, second, third. This is the fourth, fifth, sixth clock. Seven, eight, nine. So this is the clock. So you can just see here. So initial condition was this, but after the initial condition, the for the next clock, it is one is there. This one is rotating into one time at one flip flop. So one is rotating to each flip flop at one time. Okay. So here it is having like this is one zero 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 is the first state. Second is zero one zero zero. Zero zero one zero 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 one, and after that there is a repetition in the state. So these four states are there into this flip flop. So these are called like used states. And similarly, again the, these four states are being rotated, or again the same state are being re repeated. So we can say like because it is four bit uh, a a ring counter. So, with respect to the formula that we have just uh, seen, like what is the relation between number of flip flops and the states? So, if it is four bit, two to the power four, that means sixteen states should be there. 
but out of the 16 states only four states are being used so used states are four, four only so here in ring counter used states are four and unused states are 12 okay so sometimes it may be asked like what is the used states into here in ring counter you can think of like based on the number of bits if four bit is there so four states are used if five bit ring counter is there five bits uh, five states will be used other states will be unused okay so this is the basic idea of uh, the ring counter so few conclusions we can just make like if any ring counter is there that is having n flip flop a ring counter then the minimum number of states will be the n it's like four uh, flip flops are there into the ring counter then four states will be the minimum states and then the number of unused states number of unused states states will be 2 to the power n minus this n states so that will be the unused states so for n flip flop ring counter used states or minimum used states you can call it minimum used states is equal to n and similarly it's n minus So this is the output. You can see the timing diagram also. So for this, you can just see the timing diagram. So once you will be uh, looking at the timing diagram, you can just see is the Q0, Q1, Q2, and Q3. So with respect to the clock, so whenever there will be, because it is uh, edge triggered, so whenever there will be a positive edge, whenever there will be a positive edge, suppose this is the clock, so it will be working like whenever there is a positive edge, it will be activating otherwise it is deactivated this is the clock and the positive edge is this is the positive edge so whenever there will be a positive edge the clock will uh, this flip flop will be activated and it will be providing the output so what will be the output you can just see here is like suppose we are plotting the q naught so initially we will be saying like the q naught is one or if it think of like this one this one here so it is like the q3 if we plot the q3 you can just think of it yeah if we are plotting the q3 so q3 when the high clock is coming out so first is it there at that time it is having high value it is having high value in the sense so at first clock it will be high okay it will be remaining high till this time period and after that it becomes zero okay and at that time what will be the q2 what will be the q1 what is the q0 we will be looking at so at that at this clock the other flip flops will be at zero only and this one will also be zero and up to here it is zero but once q3 is one and the next clock is there so next clock it will be going to q3 is going to be zero and then q2 will be high so q2 will be high here till one clock and for the remaining clock it will be like zero okay so for this second this is the clock 1, this is the clock 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like that. So when the clock 1 is there, Q3 will be high. When clock 1 is there, Q3 will be high. All others will be low. When clock 2 is there, at that time, Q2 will be high. When clock 2 is there, Q2 will be high. Otherwise, it will be 0. 
okay similarly when clock 3 will be coming so q1 will be high otherwise zero when clock 4 will be coming so it's like yes four. this is one this is two up to here only it will be and third will be like from here the third will be there and then there will be the fourth that is when fourth clock will be coming this will be high then it becomes zero so again after fourth when the fifth clock will be coming again the one will be uh, q3 will be zero for one when the fifth clock after the fifth it is six so first second third is first second third fourth fifth sixth seven eight okay so zero one two three four five six seven eight okay so likewise it is there so you can just think of it so once the q naught is there so q naught that is this will be one at fourth clock so at the fourth class this is there at the fifth clock Again, the one will be Q Q naught, Q three naught. So at the fifth clock, this will be high, and for other other time it will be low till here. When again the ninth clock will be coming. Suppose here, if it is ninth clock, then again it will be one zero zero zero. So if we plot it here, the ninth clock also, and this is the positive edge. So you can just think think like. It will be activated again. Uh, it will be high at ninth clock. Okay. So likewise. So similarly, if it is here, it will be low. It will be low till the sixth, and at sixth, it will be activated. And it will be high at seventh, and it will be high at eighth. So you can just think of it. Like each of the output is having a time period of like from suppose here to here, this will be the one time period, and similarly from here to here, time period of the time period of three output. This is time period of two output. So here all the time periods are equal in all the cases. Okay, and here the one, the one is there. That one was here. It is shifting from here to here, and from here to here it is shifting. Likewise, likewise it is rotating. This is how the timing diagrams are there. Okay. So one thing you can just note it down. So the counters are behaving like a frequency divider also. So how it is behaving like a frequency divider? So frequency is you can just see what is the frequency here. Please like this is the clock period. Okay, so this is the clock period. Okay, so if t is the clock period of the clock, then frequency will be f clock. That will be one upon t clock. So frequency of the clock is there, f c l. Then the frequency of here is like the, it is going to be one fourth because one two three four after four clock uh, t clock. The time period of the Q3 is 4 t clock. Then the time period of Q2 is again 4 t clock. So 4 t clock time period is high four times. So frequency will be 1 by 4 time. Okay. So its meaning is the output frequency, the F output that is frequency output. Output is having the frequency that is the input frequency divided by 4 here. Its meaning F clock, the clock frequency divided by the 4. And this four is nothing but the number of states, number of used states into the ring counter. So that is what it is given here. So I hope uh, it is clear to you. Okay. 
so this was the johnson uh, ring counter the next one is uh, the second one that is the johnson counter the johnson counter is similar to the ring counter only but the only difference is in the johnson counter it is having more number of states than the ring counter so ring counter is having only four used states but in case of johnson counter it is having eight used states so eight used states in the sense so if we talk about here so we can think of like this was the uh, ring counter in case of johnson counter the only difference is like initially in case of uh, ring counter we basically provide one initially initially we have to provide one to the last flip flop to avoid that in the johnson counter basically the feedback is not from here feedback is from here that means initially if all the flip flops are 0 0 0 then q 0 bar will be 1 so here no need to provide the extra one it can get the one directly from here so in case of this johnson uh, counter it is also named as the twisted ring counter twisted ring counter in the sense we are just twisting the ring counter to get the johnson counter so here by doing this modification what it basically does is once we go with the timing diagram so in the timing diagram it's like the clock is there then q3 q2 q1 and q0 so once initially suppose clock first clock it is there all flip clocks are 000, zero, zero. then the first clock when the first clock is coming so because all the flip flops are 0 0 0 q naught will be 0 but q naught bar will be 1 so this is 1 that will be feedback to the input here so after the first clock it will be 1 here and this will be 0 this is 0 this is 0 again after this next clock it will be 1 but this is 0 but feedback here is q bar so if it is 0 the q bar q naught bar will be 1 so this 1 will be feedback into q3 this d3 is basically so it will be coming out to be here so again it will be one and this one will be coming here this is zero and this is zero similarly this is zero so it will be one complemented will be here in the third clock this is this one is here this one is shifted here this zero will be shifted here again it is zero so this zero complement of it will be the feedback so it will be one then this one will be here then this one will be here and this one will be here so once it is one now if it is 1 now, that means its complement is 0. So once its complement is 0 in the sense, 0 will be feedback here. So its output now will be 0. Then it will be 1. This is 1. And this is 1. Again, it is 1. So it will be coming out to be 0. And here it is 0. Then this is 1. This is from here to here, it will be shifting like it is 1. And because this is 1, D naught is 1. So D naught bar will be a q naught bar will be like so here it's meaning is like here it is one if here it is one the q naught is one so q naught bar will be zero so this zero will be feedback here so again it is here zero is feedback this zero will be this zero will come here this zero will come here this one will be coming here again there will be a zero this zero this zero and this zero after this zero again the same thing will be repeated from here it will be repeating the same thing so you can just think of it like 0, 1, 2, 3, this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if you talk about the ninth clock, so ninth clock will be again giving the output like 1, this is 0, this is 0, and this is 0. That is the same that is repeating again. So if we talk about like what is the states here, so in terms of the states, you can just think of, so starting with 0, 0, 0, again it has reached to 0, 0, and again it is repeating. So what are the states that are repeating is they're having 0, 0, 0, then this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then again 0. So start, it will be either 0 from, from 0, then it is up to here. These are the states that are the used states. These are called 
द यूज स्टेट ऑफ द जॉनसन काउंटर सो वट वट इज द नंबर सो दिस वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट सो इफ इट इज अ फोर बिट जॉनसन काउंटर सो इट इज हैविंग एट यूज स्टेट सो हाउ मेनी यूज स्टेट एट यूज स्टेट आर देयर सो इन जनरलाइज सेंस वी कैन से लाइक इफ एन फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स are in johnson counter then used states will be there is 2n the used states will be so here 2n will be the used state but in case of ring counter it was n states so n unused states so what is the unused states will be 2 to the power n minus 2n so that will be the unused states into the johnson counter and in case of frequency if we talk about the timing diagrams you can just plot it out so timing diagram is like the output frequency frequency of the output a will be the input frequency divided by number of states so that is 2n so this is the number of states and this is the input frequency so this is a uh, basic idea about uh, the synchronous counters that is johnson and ring and johnson counters so the next uh, topic that we will be looking at is the asynchronous counters so what is asynchronous counters so asynchronous counters are also called as the ripple counters it is also called like the ripple counters so ripple counters is we will just see like how the ripple counters are there so ripple counters are like it, these are the fixed counters or they will be counting the fixed sequence they will be counting the fixed sequence so they will be counting the fixed sequence in the sense it will be counting either up sequence or the down sequence so we will see like what is uh, the up sequence and what is down sequence so up sequence in the sense it will be starting with zero then it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 it is counting likewise so it is up sequence down sequence is like suppose it is starting with 15 14 13 12 11 going up to zero up to here suppose it is going up to 15 so likewise this is the up sequence and this is the down sequence so in case of asynchronous type of counters first of all it will not be having the same clock with all the flip flops and it will be using the counting either up upward counting or downward counting so we will just see how it is basically implemented so to implement up and down counters here in case of asynchronous counters the flip flops that will be used is it is used in toggle mode in the sense always in asynchronous type of counters whatever flip flops we will be using it will be working in toggle mode so toggle mode in the sense if the flip flop is on it will be complementing the output so whatever was the previous output the next output will be the complement of the previous output so this is the basic idea of the asynchronous counters we will just proceed so for an example so if suppose we are considering an example of a uh, uh, 3 bit ripple counter so what is the meaning of 3 bit ripple counter so first of all if it is 3 bit ripple counter then how many uh, flip flops will be required so if 
three bit is given, its meaning three flip flops will be required. If three bit ripple counter is there because n here is small n is three, three bit ripple counter so if small n is three. So capital n, what will be the capital n? That will be two to the power three. That means two to the power three in the sense it is eight. So this eight is the number of states. That means this counter will be having eight states. So it is having eight states. So starting with because it is we are going to uh, implement three bit up counter, up ripple counter. So if we are going to count the up in upward direction. So starting with like zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one. 110111 again the same thing after that it will come out to be 000 and then it will be repeating this so likewise this is going to repeat again so this is the eight states so these are the eight states of the counter okay so how the circuit diagram is there we will just see the circuit diagram so that that can be implemented either by using T flip flop or D flip flop because here flip flop should be working in toggle mode. So toggle in toggle mode there are two flip flops only. One is either T flip flop or JK flip flop. So we'll be using either D a T flip flop or JK flip flop in case of asynchronous type of uh, counter implementation. So how it will be uh, how its structure will be there? So in case of like the structure, how, right now we are just drawing it out like how the structure will look like. But uh, once we will be looking into the next classes, we will be seeing like once we are going to implement any circuit, what are the different states are there. So for that, we will see that part into uh, the next class. Okay. Right now we will be just looking it out like how we will be implementing the ripple counters. So with the help of that method, we will be uh, looking at our, uh, looking uh, in the next class. But right now we will just considering so three bit is there. So three number of flip flops because n is equal to three means three flip flops are required. And it is having eight states. These many states will be there. So how the configuration will be there? Suppose we are using the JK flip flop. If we are using JK flip flop, we will be having three different JK flip flops, and all flip flops will be, will be working in toggling mode. So toggling mode is the sense their inputs J and K inputs will be there. That will be one one. So if it is one one, then only it works as a toggling mode. So this will be J zero, this is K zero, this is Q naught, and this is Q naught bar. This is J one, this is K one. Q1, Q1 bar. This is J2, K2, Q2, and Q2 bar. So one thing is here. So wherever there will be the clock connected, so clock will be connected with any one of the flip flop. So wherever the clock will be connected, that flip flop is considered to be like the LSB. It will be the least significant bits. That's why J zero we have represented it as J zero. So this is the clock, okay, and it is having the J zero. And to implement the up counter, we should be having here the bubble. In the sense, this will be a negative edge triggered clock will be there. The flip flop will be there with a negative edge trigger. So all the flip flops will be with negative edge trigger. A bubble is there, so that will get a negative edge trigger. Likewise, likewise, you need to put that, okay? And then, how the inputs will be there? So J will be one, and K will be one here. The next J and K will be one and one because if it is one and one, then only it will be in toggling mode. So in asynchronous, the flip flop basically works in toggling mode. But how the clock will be connected here? The clock is not connected with here. So this clock will be connected with the output of the first first flip flop. So this output is going to be connected with this clock. 
this output is going to be connected with this clock and here is the output so output will be this this is the q naught so one output will be here q1 and q2 so once we go with the timing diagram you can just look at it if you go with the timing diagram so here it is q0 q1 q2 q0 q1 q2 and there will be the clock if there is a clock how it is varying so when the initial first clock is there so first clock is there in the sense zeroth clock all the flip flops are considered to be like suppose 0 0 0 initial condition we are assuming like this 0 0 0 so if it is 0 0 0 when the next clock is coming out because it is negative is triggered so this clock is coming out to be there in this end there is a first negative clock like negative edge so this is the first negative edge this is the second negative edge because this is the clock it will be there this is the first suppose first uh, negative edge triggering, triggering is there the second edge triggering we are just counting it out okay so clock one is there clock two is there three four five six likewise we are counting but we are thinking of like the clock is coming with respect to negative edge triggering okay so once the negative edge triggering is there so initially it will be zero 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 this states will be zero 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 when the next clock is coming this is coming so it will be in toggling mode so this q naught will be changing to one q naught will be changing to one because this is having a negative edge trigger. but you can just look at it here the q naught previously the q naught was zero so once it is zero okay and it is changing from zero to one so it is changing from the, this q naught is changing from zero to one it is going from zero to one it is positive edge trigger. so this will not be activated so it will its value will be remaining the same because it is one one but this clock is this uh, clock is not activated so flip flop will not be working so whatever is the value here that will be remaining the same the q1 will be same here also q1 is zero zero so if q1 is not changing so q it is positive edge or it is negative edge so negative edge in the sense the q1 should be changing from zero to one sorry this is the positive one this is the positive one if we talk about the negative edge so negative edge in the sense it should be one to zero so when it is changing one to zero so it is going from one to zero in the sense this is a negative edge so whenever q1 is going from negative going from one to zero then there will be a negative edge but q1 is changing from zero to zero itself there is no change so this clock this flip flop will not be activated so its value will be remaining the same so i hope you are getting the point in the next cycle in the next clock if because it is negative history whenever it, uh, this flip flop zero is directly connected with the clock so it is directly connected with the negative clock so whenever there is a negative it, clock it will be activated activated in the sense this is one one so it will be toggling toggling in the sense if it is one now next time it will be zero because it is toggling and next we will be looking at like q naught previously it was one now it has changed to zero so once previously it was one and now it is changing to zero it's meaning there is a negative edge triggering there is a negative edge so if there is a negative edge this flip flop will be activated if this flip flop is activated in a sense it will be working based on the input condition so input condition is one and one so it will be toggling the q1 so q1 was previously zero so now it will be toggling so toggling means it will be one but here, in case of this output, it will be depending based on the Q1 value. So Q1 value is just, you can just look at it. Q1 value has just changed from 0 to 1. So if changing from 0 to 1, in the sense, it is a positive edge. So it, this will not be activated. If it is not activated, this Q2 will be remain the same. Similarly, for the next clock, again, there is a negative edge. So this will be working. If it is working, it will be toggling toggling from 0 to 1 so once it is toggling from 0 to 1 it is a positive edge triggering so this will not be toggled it will be remaining the same again if 1 and 1 if q1 is changing from 1 to 1 there is no negative edge it should be changing from 1 to 0 then only there will be a change 
J or the uh, flip flop two will not be activated, so its value will be same. In the next clock, if it is the Q naught will be changing to zero, so it is changing from one to zero. So if it is one to zero, it is a negative. This is zero flip flop. This is one flip flop. This is two. So second one flip flop, first flop, the flip flop will be having its value change, so it will be zero. Again, you can just see from Q one is changing from one to zero. So one to zero in the sense there is a negative edge. If there is a negative edge, the flip flop two will be changing. So changing in the sense its output will be one now. From zero, it is now toggle to one. In the next clock cycle, this zero will be changing to one because the LSB flip flop will always be changing for each of the clock. It is complementing it. So zero one, zero one, zero one like this. So again, it is zero one. So it is zero one. It is a positive edge. So there will be no change. So again, here is zero zero. So there is no change. So there is a no change in the sense it will be remaining the same value. That is one. But the next clock, this will be changing to zero, and it is changing from one to zero. So one to zero in the sense there is a negative edge. Negative edge there there. This will be changing. So it is changing to one. So again, it is zero to one. Means there is positive edge. Zero to one. Positive edge is there. So there is a no change. For year, so it will be no change. So this is uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. This is seven. Okay. Next one is the next clock that is eighth clock. So in the eighth clock, it will be changing to one. And here it is zero to one, so there will be no change. If one to one, so there is no change. Like this. In suppose the ninth clock. In the ninth clock, we just look at it. In the ninth clock, what will be there? In the ninth clock, it is changing. To zero because each time Q naught will be changing. So again, it is changing from one to zero. If it is changing from one to zero, there is a negative edge. So this will also be changing. Here also, it is changing from one to zero. So there is a negative edge. If there is a negative edge, this will also be changing. You can just look at it. So starting, we have started with zero zero zero, and finally we have reached to zero zero zero. And after zero zero, again, this steps will be repeated. So you can just look at it, the counting. So starting with zero, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After seven, again it comes to zero. So this is the binary equivalent, like zero, uh, decimal equivalent zero. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. This is seven. After seven, it is again going back to zero. It is going back to zero. This is how it is repeating. So this is the up count. So this is three bit ripple up counter. Three bit ripple up counter. It is a ripple counter. Why? Because it is having flip flops that are not connected directly with the clock. Each of the flip flops are not connected with the uh, the clock. That's why it is a asynchronous type of counter. So that's why it is a ripple counter. And it is three bit. It's meaning three flip flops will be there. And it is up counter. So for up counter, you can just say counting will be from zero to seven digit way. So one thing you can say, suppose we want to implement same thing with three bit down counter, three bit ripple down counter. So in case of three bit ripple down counter, what we need to do is we just need to go with the same circuit, but only change we need to do is. Here we can directly say if we want to implement three bit ripple down counter. If we want to implement the three-bit ripple down counter, and if we are having the uh, three-bit up counter, in that case, we only need to do is what we need to just do it is So here, what we need to do is we can directly 
change like if we change this if we change here instead of connecting q not the positive output if we connect the negative output to the clock the same counter becomes a down counter we can change likewise it becomes a down counter if we this is the lsb and this is the msb bits you can check the clock q2 q1 and q0 so once you will be going through it will be starting with like if suppose it is initially it is 000 if it is initially 000 and this first clock is there then the next clock is there so if it is negative is triggered the first clock is in the sense it is one so it is zero to one is there so this one is zero to one because this is directly connected with the negative one so negative clock is there so it will be connecting to uh, directly changing to one so once it is one means q naught is one but q naught bar will be zero so q naught bar will be zero so initially the q naught here we will be like like q naught bar if q naught is one uh, zero q naught bar will be one if q naught is one q naught bar will be zero in the sense now for this output it is clock is changing from one to zero if it is changing from one to zero it is a negative history so this will be triggered this will be triggered in the sense it will be one again here also initially it was zero and then it is one its bar will be like one and zero will be there the q1 bar will be changing from one to zero so again this will be activated so it becomes one similarly once you will be proceeding you will be getting like it will be getting the counting like one two three four five six seven eight nine likewise so you can just count it out so it is one the next one will be like this is other the seven it's decimal equivalent also we will be writing it out so decimal is zero then it is seven once it is going to be there here it is, it is coming out to be six then it will be coming out to be five then it is coming out to be four then three then two then one and then it comes zero 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 after one zero 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 it will again come one 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 okay so it is zero seven six five four three two one zero then seven again so here the repetition is there with respect to likewise so it is starting with the zero it will start with seven six five four three two one then again zero okay so likewise it is a down counter so this is the case okay similarly if you want to implement the down counter there is some other way also so other way what we can do is If you paste it here also, so we have implemented like we have removed this. So we have removed this and connected with here, so it becomes down counter. Or suppose we have made it likewise only. We are going to connect that only. But instead of uh, negative edge triggering, if we do the positive edge triggering also, if we do the positive edge triggering, means if we are doing the positive edge triggering and connecting in the same way then also it will be a down counter this configuration will also be a 3 bit ripple down counter so this is also a 3 bit ripple down counter once you will be going with the timing diagram you can get it easily like whether it is a positive uh, down or up counter okay so for identifying the up and down counter there is a, a case so what is that case is basically we need to think of like connecting so how we are going to connect with the uh, clock that is basically going to define like whether it is a up counter or down counter if it is a negative edge triggering 
if it is a negative is triggering and in that case if q is connected with the clock q is connected with the clock it is up bound similarly if q bar is connected with the clock of the next flip flop it becomes down bound similarly if it is a positive edge triggering if it is a positive edge triggering and q is connected with the clock it becomes down counter and if it is connected with clock is connected with q bar then it becomes up counter so we just correlate with the concepts here this is the down counter you can just see this is a positive edge triggering so in the positive edge triggering q is connected with the clock so q is connected with the clock so it will be a down top, down uh, counter so in case of a ripple counter this is how it is implemented that is the bcd counter so one is called like bcd bcd counter so this bcd counter so bcd counter means it will be counting from 0 1 2 3 up to 9 that means how many states are there here the total 10 states are there so bcd counter is there or we can say like bcd ripple counter bcd counter or bcd ripple counter if this is the case then how it should be implemented so there are 10 states so how many flip flops will be required so that we can find out by using the formula n should be greater than or equals to 2 to the power n so 10 should be greater than or equal to 2 to the power n its meaning n should be greater than or equals to log 10 to the base 2 so it will be coming out to be like n will be equals to it is coming out to be uh 3 point something so it is coming out to be like greater than or equals to 3.32 so n will be always a integer so it is more than 3 so it will be 4 so if n is equals to 4 in the sense for which it is a uh, ripple counter we should be having four flip flops so we require four flip flops for the bcd counter so in case of bcd counter how the flip flops will be indicated is like what is the circuit diagram we will just going through so there is a four flip flops and the four flip flops will be there and it will be working in toggling mode so j0 k0 q0 q0 bar j1 k1 q1 q1 bar j2 k2 q2 bar j3 k3 q3 bar q3 and the clock will be there so clock first of all it is up counter we are considering so if it is an up counter there will be a clock if it is up counter we will be considering like it is it is likewise the negative is triggering and it is connected with the here it is even connected with the positive of the output so it is connected likewise so this is first of all going to implement the g and k is 1 1 this is up counter first of all so if we are putting this as the circuit it is like this output this circuit is having a up counter but it, it will be starting with 0 0 0 and finally it will be going to up 1 1 1 that means it is having 16 states but we should be requiring 10 states only so what will be the 10 states it will be starting with 0 0 0 0 up to 9 it will be going after 9 there will be a 10 so this will be the 10 but this 10 up to 0 to 9 we require 10 states should not be there so once the 10 is coming out to be there 10 in the sense this flip flop will be having 1 this will be having 0 this will be having 1 and this will be having 0 so as it is going to be 10 then what we need to do is we need to clear its output to 
so it should after 9 it should be going to 10 so for after 9 it should be going to 0 it should not be going to 10 so once it is going to have the condition of 10 its meaning is its meaning is the output so 10 is like this so 10 in sense because this is the msb this is the lsb and this is the msb so msb is this one is msb so it should be one this is zero this is one and this will be zero this is the condition so msb is this one so its meaning is when the 10 will be coming at that time this flip flop the flip flop three and flip flop one will be having the value one and one so this two will be having one and one so based on these values one and one what we will be deciding is we need to get a code so what is that code is basically so there will be there will be like at that time when the this is not required state so here this will be connected with because at that time it will be one at that time it will be one and the, this one will also be one so this two will be one so we'll be ending it together we will be ending it after ending it will become one so once it is one then what we will be doing is we will be using a clear so in the flip flop there is a clear button so if it is a clear button so this is the clr so if it is clear in the sense when clear is activated the flip flop output will become zero 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 it will be clearing its output so once we connect it with here now as soon as the states of the flip flop is going to be one zero one zero this two inputs will be and together and it will be it will be generating output one and this output one will be clearing the output of each of the flip flops so uh, after nine instead of going 10 it will be going to zero again so it becomes a 10 state counter so that's why it is called vcd counter or also called like decayed counter we say like decayed counter because it is going to count 10 states 10 states that's why it is decayed counter so for counting if we go with the timing diagrams so it would be like the clock will be there then q3 q2 q1 q0 will be there and if we look at the timing diagrams so initially it will be like 0 0 0 0 then after one clock 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 it will be going with like 0 then it will be going to 1 then it's going to 2 after 1 it is going to 2 then it is going to 3 and then 4 5 6 then it is going to 7 then it is 8 8 will do this then 9 after 9 after 9 the 10 states will be like 10th state will be like 1 0 1 0 if this is the state then here is 1 because you could just look at it the q3 and q1 both are never at 1 1 position in any of the states it is only the case when it is at 10th state or it is counting 10 it is the first time it is going to be 1-1. One, one. So by using the help of this 1-1, one, one, this 1-1 one, one is and together after ending because it is 1-1, one, one, it is output generating 1. So this output 1 is used to clear the flip-flop output. So after clearing the output, the next instead of after 9, instead of 10, it will be showing not 10, it will be showing the zero 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 okay so because after this it will be actually it should be 10 but at it will not be 10 it will be the final result will be like the zero 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 
So in the sense, you can just think of it. So it will not be here. Instead of here, it will be 0, 0, 0, 0. So after 0, 0, 0, again, it will be going for the 1, 2, 3, 4 line. Again, after 9, instead of 10, it will be going to 0 because we have done a decoding. So this is the AND gate we have used and that will be clearing it out. So this is the basic idea of the counter that is the BCD counter. So I hope you have got the basic idea about uh, the basic uh, the synchronous and asynchronous counters or we can say like synchronous counters and ripple counters.